Cerca Italia es el amo del catenacho. En defensa, ¿quién pasa? A veces solamente el viento. El balón que vuelve a ser amagado va a venir el desborde y nuevamente el regate. El servicio tiene que salir así a media altura. Se revuelve la defensa. El toque al frente es para Alberto Girardino. Y va solo hace por el esférico Luca Toni. Pero antes está cortando Lucas Nio. Lo interesante es que Australia es un equipo que se anima. No le tiene respeto a Italia, le juega de igual a igual. En soccer, everybody has the same um, goal: coach, players, and referees, which is one day go to the World Cup. All of them, the one in shape, the one not in shape, all of them, most likely Hispanic kids. You, you won't say like all the races trying to play soccer because maybe soccer is something more to Hispanic people. All of the boys in my class play soccer. One thread that, that held all of my students together from countries all over the world is soccer. They all love soccer. Baseball happens to be America's pastime and um, it's the most favorite sport played by everybody. It's something that everybody can do. It's fun. It's picnic in the park, hot dogs, apple pie. All right, ball in front of you. Good. Take your time. It's not moving. Remember, this is not a moving target. It's the one that's moving that you can do with adjustments. I play baseball myself. I enjoy the game. I really love coaching kids because I love kids. I like to see them grow, learn, mature. I was playing baseball when I was a kid, but I was playing soccer also. Then I quit baseball and I started playing basketball. But for some reason I decided for soccer at the end. And now I become a referee. On America culture, basically it's ba basketball and baseball. We cannot change it. It's already there, you know. That's something will take really time to make soccer popular in America. I referee different leagues and it's always the same. Only Hispanic or people with a Hispanic background. Like me, I'm from Panama. That's why I speak Spanish. In this area, community, we've got a lot of Hispanics who are fitting in as they come from other countries, fitting in with the American culture of apple pie scenario of baseball. And as opposed to soccer, where they stay and they don't know the language, baseball, you have to learn the language. And so when they come over from different countries and they don't speak, you know, American, they get to meet American culture. The difference with soccer is that signals. Everything is made by signals. So maybe he won't have any problem if even he don't understand the language. Yeah, my English is very bad because I never, I never use the, the English for work or not. I work with Spanish people. Uh -huh. I work. Uh, Television, radio, all of the advertisements up in their area of the city is in Spanish. So basically, they have no need to learn English because everything is given to them in Spanish. I live in LA and uh, I came into 1968. I played soccer uh, 60 years ago. This is my certificate for ESL Teacher of the Year. I won this certificate because my students love learning so much. I do love them and they loved me and we worked hard. They were eager to learn. They really wanted to learn. But when it came down to the test, the language barrier just left them behind. Yeah, well, I think for other people who come from other countries, it's, it's hard, you know, to learn over here. Like, when I came over here, I didn't even know English, but I have to learn English because where I work, I'm a babysitter, I have to speak English, but it was it was hard for me to learn another language, but now, um, you know, I learned it. <laughs> there were, were times my parents came in, parents of my students, and I would tell them, have one day where, a week where it's English week. You speak English to the kids, they speak English to you, and it will be a day that you guys can practice together because English will benefit both you and your child. I always talk to them, talk to your kid and to know more your kid and you know what they want, what they need, and talk to your kid a lot and you know, support everything they want. Yeah, that's what I can say for other parents. Yeah, so you can encourage your kids just by helping them out, just by doing what they want to do, just by like, if they have a goal in life, you can help them accomplish it. There are 
so many scholarships available to Hispanic children. I talk to my students on a daily basis about going to college, about what they would need to do to get college, that the money is there for them when, when they get out of school, but that they have to learn English. You're in America, so you have to do as the country that you're in is doing. And that's one thing that they've really stressed here, that if the kids would interact and do American things and not more so their own culture, they will learn and fit in a little easier. If you're secluding and saying, well, you know, I don't want to play baseball because I don't speak English. I'd rather play soccer because most of our Hispanics are playing soccer. Fine and dandy, but on the same token, you're limiting their abilities. You are putting a clamp on them and saying, I don't want you to further ed your education. I don't want you to be any more than what we are. You stay within this little environment and you do what you want to do. That doesn't help the community at all. For me, it was hard. You know, for them, it's more easy because they was born over here. And, you know, I have to work for them. But, you know, it, for me, when I was, I was born over there in Mexico, it was really hard for my parents, for me. So... It's another life over there. Over here, everything, you have everything over here. You work, you can get whatever you want if you work, you know? They always say only in America you can become a millionaire. Only in America you can fulfill your dream. Well, it's true, but it's true because your desires extend far beyond the limitations that you are placed with. And there's a lot of people that still have that thinking that I can't do this because of, or I don't want to do this because of. And I think that's wrong. Those little kids, they're American, they're born here, but their parents are Hispanic. They're coming from a Hispanic country. So they get it from their parents. If the little boy is tall, he could play basketball, they wish he, he plays soccer. Yeah. It's the way it's set up. I'm so, sorry to tell you that, but it's the way it's set up. Like Argentina is a country, you born and they put the t-shirt to you already. You don't choose your team. You born and you get a t-shirt from the team already. Then we're gonna have problem because when they grow up, then they can get that's the problem we have, like Hispanic live on East LA. Black African American live in South Central, white people on North, you see, everybody. Segregation is not the way, you know. Integration to me seems the way. You have little, your little boy, you say, hey, don't play with Or oh, Asian boy, hey, don't play with the. And then everybody grew up with that, and that's another major problem we have about race. There was a time before Jack and Robinson broke the color barrier, and you couldn't play baseball with another white person. As a black person, you knew that you couldn't do certain things. You couldn't go to restaurants, you couldn't sit in the front of the bus, you couldn't go to a certain bathroom. Because of the fact that you were black, you were excluded. So a lot of the blacks had the mentality of, they have to stay at home. Today, there is not. And a lot of the kids nowadays, they don't know the history. They don't think they have anything that stops them. In 10 years, I'll either want to be at UCLA or uh, a college down south. And when I grow up, I want to be a uh, when I grow up, I want to be a house architect. I want to go to USC, and if I don't get accepted there, UCLA or um, Yale. And I'll, while I'm in college, I want to either play football, baseball, or basketball. And if I if I have for my backup career, I want to be a general contractor or an NFL player. And then I'm going to be a math professor at USC. He opened the door for numerous others that in reality was not just a black thing. It's Hispanics, Orientals alike. We, I keep this as a memento to show my son who happens to be 10 years old and he's playing. And it's like, I tell him that if you don't dream and have a vision, you'll never have a future. The problem is not the sport, the problem is on races. But the problem about race is because the culture, is because you learn from your parents. Oh, don't get involved with these people. Now you're dealing with me, now you're like, oh, yeah, there are some dark guys, they, they, they're nice, because you're dealing with me. But I'm pretty sure the parents say, hey, be careful with, with those people with this color. See what I'm saying? So, and if I take a lady to my house with you guys' color, my family gonna be like, hey, <laughs> that I did, I mean, I did. <laughs> Someday gonna finish. Sooner or later it gonna finish. Because we gonna learn we gotta be united, like the country named United States. I don't mean to be Martin Luther King, I have a dream because then they gonna kill me. But someday it gonna finish. 
Oh, you know how we're gonna finish? You see the white little boy eating tacos. You see the black little boy eating tacos. So they get into Mexican style. So when they grow up, then they show their parents, oh, it's okay, you can eat tacos. You can eat the chili. So Hispanic culture is getting over the rest of the culture. Even you guys eating tacos.